Good morning YouTube and welcome to another BYD video. Today I'm talking about uh, Komu AI, Komu Assist 1S, Vision 1S, uh, Buka Pilot and the entire ecosystem of Komu. Uh, so you can visit komu.ai to learn more about this but uh, I'll, I will be talking in depth about this entire ecosystem in this video. So let's get started. Komu Assist 1S is sort of the name of the entire package, so including the hardware and software. The price right now is Malaysian Ringgit 3799 which is roughly $1,000 Australian, I believe. Uh, let me just check for you right now. It is, yeah, about 1200 Ringgit, but um, the prices do go on sale sometimes, so maybe you hold off for that. Um, I guess, what is the purpose of Commerce's 1S? So, there's three pain points with my BYD out of three. So the first one is using lane keep assist and the car ping ponging. Um, this is when you use the system and the car's like ability to keep you in the lane is not great. So it goes left, goes right, goes left, goes right, even though the road is relatively straight. That's really annoying. The second one is having to hit resume or you have to tap the accelerator when the lead car starts moving again in a traffic jam. So as you use cruise control to come to a stop, uh, I believe if you wait more than three seconds, the car in front starts moving again. The, your car won't follow. You'll have to remind it to follow by pressing resume or tapping accelerator, which is really annoying. And lastly, the braking and acceleration, uh, I guess, logic of BYD's stock system is not great either. Uh, I find, especially when you're coming to a stop, the braking can be a little bit harsh. And at times, I feel the car is braking too late. And so it can be a bit of a frightening experience for even myself and I've driven 50,000 kilometers in less than two years. Um, the answer to all this is just give Komu AI a try, but uh, don't do it just yet of course. Um, get through this video first, I'll give it a thorough breakdown on the features and the limitations and what can you, what you can expect from this. Okay, so first, uh, what is it? So Komu AI, or all the words I just said, is it's a, it consists of custom accessory device and custom software and it provides improvements to the car's stock cruise control and lane keep assist logic. Oh, improvements, sorry. But like more importantly, what does it do? It, it provides three key features that I just mentioned. So first is lane centering assist. So through using the Vision 1S, which is the device, and Buka Pilot, which is the software, and together it's known as Commerce Assist or KA. I'll just refer it to as KA from now on because there's too many words. Um, it can steer the vehicle to keep it centered in the lane. So this function is actually very, very well implemented. It can clearly read the lane markings and it'll keep your car dead centered in the lane. Of course, unless the lane markings go away or if it's raining really hard or it's fogging or if it's snowing, if you live with someone that snows, um, obviously the conditions have to be met, but when it is met, um, I find that it works really, really well. And you'll, I'll, I'll show this in more detail during my on the road driving review uh, that I'll publish uh, at a later date. The second function it provides is smoother cruise control. Um, so KA can also, just like the BYD SOC system, uh, maintain a safe following distance from the car in front and you can also adjust it by using the buttons on the steering wheel. So this basically just improves BYD's adaptive cruise algorithm, um, it makes everything a whole lot smoother, which I think is a really good user experience. And last but not least is stop and go functionality. Um, so KA can hold the vehicle's brakes in central traffic, but most importantly, when the lead car starts moving again, your BYD will automatically follow up. So there's no more hitting resume, no more tapping accelerator, it's all automatic. Um, so, uh, I guess the next question is, what cars does it support? Um, at the moment, from the website, I can see it supports Toyota, Perugia, which is Malaysian, Proton, which is also Malaysian, Honda, Lexus, Honda, BYD, and more. So I'll just cut over to the website so we can all have a look together. So this is the website, looks pretty nice. And over at the top, you'll see supported cars, we'll just click it. And there's actually a bunch of cars that's supported, obviously for any Australian viewers, a lot of these brands or even models of certain brands that we know, for example, the Honda City, we don't have any more, but Malaysia still has it. Um, Honda Arnic Hybrid, for example, the old one, Toyota Alphard, Toyota Camry, Toyota Corolla, Corolla Cross, uh, the Velos we don't have, um, 
Lexus ES even, um, Lexus NX, BYD Auto 3 is, is why, why I, I bought this of course because um, this is the car that I own. Um, now I must mention at this point that Comu AI is actually a, a spin-off I guess you can call um, of OpenPilot uh, which is a US developed software by US company comma.ai but um, there are a few limitations with their system in terms of usability for us people that uh, drive in countries where the driving position is right-hand drive um, in the US as you may all know um, the driving position is left-hand drive so everything the software is all kind of tuned towards left-hand drive vehicles and conditions and all that so Komu AI's value add here is that um, they provide sort of support as you can see here for right-hand drive vehicles now this is important because in Australia for example we have unprotected left turns which is which we call slip roads um, we have traffic that or sorry road designs that are different because obviously being right-hand drive versus left-hand drive the road design is completely not the same so I think there is a certain value in buying common AI hardware over open pilot um, not to mention that open pilot and comma AI doesn't doesn't currently have support for BYD Auto 3 although my understanding is um, someone from that community is working on it so that might change I don't know one or two years down the line if you're watching this video in 2025 or 2026 but as of right now um, Komu AI and KA system so Vision 1S uh, Buko Pilot is mm, sort of the only solution right now if you want this kind of capability for your BYD Auto 3 Okay, so we'll move back to my document here. The next question is, is it legal? Uh, that's the sort of the hot topic <laughs> for a lot of skeptics on this topic. Um, is it legal? Well, you got to think about it this way, right? So even though V1S and BP, which is KA, can allow the car to be driven hands-free under the right conditions, driving hands-free is unfortunately not legal in Australia. So even though this system gives you that functionality, or I guess gives you that improved functionality on the car's stock systems, um, you must keep your hands on the wheel at all times. So if you do that, it's completely legal, right? Um, it's not adding anything to the car. Like this is not like you know, slapping on like massive LED bars or putting on 25-inch wheels on your little 18-inch wheel SUV. This is nothing like that. It's 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 not a it's not a hardware modification. It is simply a accessory device that improves the functionality of your car's stock systems. Um, I guess that's the easiest way that I can explain, but if you have any concerns or if my explanation didn't make sense, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try my best to explain why that this is legal. Um, I have been using this for over probably 20,000, maybe 30,000 kilometers now, and if you use it normally, obviously don't freaking drive hands-free when there's a police car next to you, no one's going to care, right? Um, uh, would it affect my car's warranty? In my opinion, no, because this KA setup is entirely plug and play. You're not splicing wires, and there's no permanent fixtures to the car. This is entirely removable. Um, I'll publish a installation video down the line, and you can all see like it's the insta installing it is so easy. It you, you don't have to damage any part of the car. You're not removing any of the hardware, um, and it's removable at any time. For example, if you, if you are concerned that your, your dealership might call you out on this, just remove it before you send it to the service center, right? And most importantly, it runs off the KA ecosystem, which is a an, an standalone hardware and software. So the car's stock systems will not be a, will not be aware that KA even exists. Um, and therefore, my conclusion is it doesn't affect what vehicle warranty. Um, as I said, if you are concerned about it, just remove it before you take it to the service center. Now, another int interesting, another good good question, I guess, is are there any issues with insurance? Because, of course, people are spending thousands of dollars a year on insurance. You don't want to be caught out and, you know, get, in, get into a situation where this thing voids your insurance coverage. Now, first, we'll have to cover some context. Um, Common assist system is, is a level two autonomous driving system. So let's just have a look at what that means. So we'll visit this link. Um, I'll post this link in the oh excuse me in the description below so you can click on it and read it yourself. Okay. So 
this website, even though it's not law, I think it explains the five levels, or I believe there's even six now, quite well. So we'll just zoom in, oops. So, level zero is no autonomy. So manual control, humans perform all driving tasks, steering, acceleration, braking at all times. So basically this means, think of a car from the 90s, right? You've got no cruise control, no ABS, no nothing. You, everything is 100% manual in terms of the operation of the vehicle. Level one is when the f vehicle se features a single automated system, um, for example, like basic cruise control, or even just adaptive cruise control, where um, the car, like it's still largely manual, but it can assist you, you know, in some ways. Um, think of like a base model Audi or Mercedes, where they'll give you like basic cruise control, but not adaptive cruise control, which is quite silly. <laughs> And then we have level two autonomy. So this is called ADAS, which is, I believe is called Advanced Driver Assistance System. Um, the vehicle can perform steering and acceleration, but the human still monitors all tasks and can take control at any time. So this is what KA is, right? So it performs steering and it performs acceleration and deceleration, but the responsibility is with the driver of the vehicle at all times, 24 seven. As soon as you get in the car, you are, the, you are responsible. Okay, doesn't matter if you use KA, doesn't matter if you don't use it, you are responsible. So level three will be environmental detection capabilities. The vehicle can perform most driving tasks, but human override is still required. So this is kind of like Tesla full self-driving, FSD, beta, whatever you call it. So it's almost level three. I think it's, personally, I find it to be level three. But KA is for all intents and purposes, level two. So it's a, it's, it's a basic, it's a basic system where, um, It'll do a lot of the tasks, but you are still responsible. So let's go back to my document. All right, as I said, the driver is always responsible for the actions of the vehicle. You cannot blame Komu AI for anything that may happen to a vehicle during the use, or even not, the use of KA. All right, for example, if you use your car's stock cruise control or lane keep system, and you weren't paying attention and you rear someone, you reckon BYD is going to pick up the blame for that? The answer is no. Okay, so if you use KA and you get into an accident, likewise, you can't blame Komu AI for anything that may happen. So if you use the system, you're using it at your own risk. Okay, you're using it at your own risk. So in this in this sense, insurance. So for example, if you're using Komu Assist and someone T-bones you, right? would insurance void your coverage just because you're using Komu Assist? Probably not, because it is still using the car's stock hardware. It is still using the radar, the sensors, and it's still using the car's steering mechanism to keep the car sent in the lane. It is not, like, it doesn't add any extra risk when you're being hit, right? You, you haven't done anything negligent by using KA. And so I think um, insurance wouldn't give a crap. Um, personally, um, I have actually had to claim my car on insurance because someone did a hit and run on my car. Um, they, no. They didn't even ask, they don't care. So that's roughly it. And now we'll move over to a short unboxing video that I recorded. Um, and we'll just have a look at, I guess the, uh, what's involved in the contents of the box when you buy it. Um, it's a very crude video. I'm literally just playing a replay, but you'll have to bear with me here. Cool. So this is what you get in the box. Um, it's a pretty nice packaging, actually. It's matte black with some Komu on it. Uh, when you first open it, you'll see some Komu propaganda in the sense of a, I think it, it's a sticker, I believe. I haven't quite figured out. It's not magnetic, so you can't just slap on your car, but I think it's, yeah, if you want to put it somewhere in your car, make it look like you're using Google Pilot. That's a quick introductory pamphlet. This is the relay. Um, I'll just pause it right here real quick. So this is just a really quick intro to what you get as part of the package. Um, I will have a full installation video down the line just to, uh, I'll be using everything you see in here in another video and I'll explain more in depth of what each individual component does and how you install it. Now this is just to show you like what you can expect when you buy it. I think. So this is a relay. Um, it, yeah. There's, there's two ports here, one's for vision and one's for power. Um, so the vision is is what connects this little screen to the car and power is what how the thing gets power. So as you can see, it uses USB-C standard, which is very nice. Um, and there are USB-C cables included with the with the purchase, so you don't have to buy more. Um, 
and this little connector here is what's called a relay so basically you plug the car's stock connector into here while you plug Komu's connector into the car if that makes sense uh, but this will make more sense during my um, installation video cool so just pull it apart to show you what it looks like yeah so this gray connector is the exact same shape and size as the one that the car already comes with which is important because we're plugging that into the black connector to the right cool so we'll put that to the side and we'll move on to the um, other stuff in the car so this is the obd2 adapter so this side is you plug into the bottom of the car and this side is the USB-C so this is used for p power plugging into the relay power port before and also this gives um, fingerprinting finger finger printing abilities so the Vision 1S device can correctly identify your car cool and the next big ticket item is the Vision 1S device um, I'll just pause uh, for a second here so this red part is uh, a cover for the double-sided tape. Um, bad angle, actually. I'll just keep going forward first. So that's the USB-C port. So this connects to the relay. And this is a cooling fan with a heatsink underneath it. So um, this is an older version of the Vision 1S device. Um, the, because this part here, so the front cover and the back cover, um, over time, it's been observed to develop a bit of a gap, which is causing sort of durability concerns. Um, Komu AI has made adjustments to this case, and it will now ship with two screws that connect that are he here and here, and it'll hold the, the front and back pieces together, which significantly increases durability and rigidity of the case. So this, is, so if you see two screws on top of your device when you buy one, um, that's why. So this is the power button here. I forgot to show. This is the two front-facing cameras, sorry, one's front-facing camera and one's the infrared, I believe, and two additional infrared LEDs. This is just so that the Vision 1S device can monitor your face at night um, to make sure that you are paying attention to the road, because if you are playing with your phone or looking out the window or something, Vision 1S will get cranky and it will remind you to please focus because you're only using a level two autonomy system. So it, it has the function to make sure you are paying attention when you use KA. Yep, so it's pretty basic, nothing too crazy. Um, and now we'll move on to the cables. So if you pull this foam apart, underneath you'll find two cables and they're literally just two USB-C cables uh, because as I explained earlier during the relay so it's literally two cables, one for this, one for that, vision and power, okay. And then you got a little, um, I guess, piece of sticker that you should put onto your windscreen first. Um, this will allow the Vision 1S device to attach to this piece a little bit easier. Yep. And I'll just show the cable. So you have one short cable. Um, this is used between the relay and the Vision 1S device. And the other longer cable is used between the relay and the OBD2 to USB-C adapter. Now this cable is significantly longer because as you might imagine, you need to install the relay at where the ADAS cluster is, which is situated next to the interior rear view mirror. So the distance between there, you could go into the headliner, down the A pillar, down the side, into the OBD2 port. The distance is quite long, that's why Komu gives you such a long cable, which is nice. Yep, see USB-C, USB-C at the end. And I'll just quickly showcase um, some still images on what you can expect to see. So this is the mount. So this sticks on the windscreen. This is the OBD2 to USB-C adapter. Here's the relay, USB-C, USB-C. This is the connector that matches what the stock system has. This is the connector where you'll plug the stocks, the car's stock system into, and you'll plug this one into the car. 
the short USB-C cable and the long one. I think there's some more photos. Uh -huh. And this is the back of the Vision One S device. You can see the fan, camera, USB-C cable, and this is that pamphlet that I, that I removed earlier from the box. Um, gives you some guides, how tos, and some social media information, and what you should have in the box. So if you're missing something, if whatever you get doesn't look like this, then probably reach out to Comic AI because they're going to give you something. Okay, um, that's about it, I think. Um, this concludes the introduction video into Comic AI and the whole ecosystem. Um, if you have any questions or just, I guess, queries relating to this and how it fits into your BYD, uh, do let me know. But keep in mind that I will be uh, releasing two videos in the future. One is how to install this stuff into your BYD Auto 3 and uh, another video to show you what how to use it, what the experience is like on the road. Um, so do ho hold out for those if you have some, I guess, questions on how to use this and how well or how, how easy it is to install into your car because it is quite an investment at 1200 ish Australian dollars it isn't cheap but I think for the right people think about Uber drivers people that drive long distances or people that are just interested in this type of technology to uplift your car's existing capabilities I think it is worth sticking around for and it's certainly worth investing in but if you're still unsure like it's it makes sense to just wait until I release I guess more detailed information on how this works Alright, uh, thanks for keeping up with me up until this point. Uh, see you later.